Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever everybody is. Um, welcome to Kai's Clan webinar, all about collaboration, collaborative learning. So thank you very, very much for joining us. Um, I just need to keep an eye on people joining us so I can keep admitting them to the room. Um, so yeah, can you maybe in the chat box put in where you guys are from? That would be awesome. So Christine, Kapil, thank you for joining. Michaela, Manal, Manal, we can see Manal is with us. Manal is all the way from Jordan, so that's awesome. Um, what's the time there, Manal? I've unmuted you, Manal, if you want to. I think it's very, very early there. Oh, Michaela from Pretoria. That's where I was born. So, um, yeah, welcome. I'm just allowing a couple more people in. Karen is in with us. Karen, oh, welcome. Thank you very much for joining us. Good morning. <laughs> We're just waiting for a couple more people to come on. And we have got Brian as well. Welcome, Brian. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> um, I need you to um, allow me to um, start my video. Okay, I'm just going to go. Same, same here. Yeah, okay. I'll just put that. I can co-host this. Just having a look. Brian should have it as well. Okay, so um, let us start. So a couple of the... Um, just to start off with, this is Bruce, Bruce Jackson. He's the founder of Kai's Clan, so um, we can blame him if anything goes wrong today. <laughs> Good morning, all, and thank you very much for joining. Uh, special thanks for Brian and Karen uh, for doing this. What's your time, uh, Brian? Um, <laughs> it's currently just on 6 a.m., so um, nice and early. A bit of an early start in uh, in Black. sunny Sydney, is it? Well, looking at Karen's um, background, yeah, definitely sunny. <laughs> I, I haven't stuck my head out there yet this morning, so. Is that the, the Harbour Bridge? The sun's just up here. Yes. <laughs> nice. Sunrise on the Harbour Bridge. <laughs> Well, um, thank you very much. So what we're going to do today, um, I've got like just a couple of slides cross over and then we're really going to have an open conversation between the teachers, really go on chat, ask some questions. Um, we really want to keep it as informal. I am recording the session as well. So we will put this morning's and tonight's session together and send that out to um, all the registrations. So let me just share my screen um, and I just make sure it's all working. Right, just thumbs up that you can see the screen. All good? Awesome. Okay, so, um, so today we're just gonna have a quick look. What is Kai's clan? Where is it coming from? Then we're gonna cross over to Karen and Brian. Um, question and answers all the way through to really, really try and um, want to keep it informal. And then there's a special surprise at the end of it. Um, so, why? Yeah, so um, about three years ago, I started, um, I was going into classrooms with my son. Uh, he was learning coding at the time. And I was just getting really frustrated with uh, what he was, uh, what he was being taught, and he was mostly using his thumbs uh, to be coding. And I was like, "This is not, this is not, you know." And just having a lot of fun, but not really learning a lot. So I really wanted more for him, and I also wanted more for other kids that are in this generation now that are facing uh, widespread automation, uh, AI. 
These things are no longer future technologies. These are current. Uh, I strongly um, believe that a McDonald's uh, food store will be uh, just a vending machine in probably maybe two, you know, two to three years. I, I you know, I'll put a put a crate of beers on it. Um, that that's what's going to happen, and we're going to see this. Um, a large uh, thing of unemployment. So we need to get our kids ready uh, for, um, for technology. And Kai's clan is basically trying to give you very advanced uh, technology, lots of different bits of technology, put it into one uh, toolbox. And for you as teachers to be able to, you know, pull out the spanner and pull out the screwdriver and, you know, give kids the opportunities and, Allow them the confidence as well. I think confidence is a big player um, with technologies to give them, you know, to give them a, a head start in their future life. So uh, thank you for joining Kai's clan and I hope you enjoy uh, today's seminar. Uh, just what Bruce was saying, it's a toolbox. So last week we covered robot avatars. Um, you'll be seeing some virtual reality and AR in the upcoming uh, webinars, census, we look at all that. Um, but the main thing today is the uniqueness on Kai's clan is about that collaboration and the collaborative learning. And that is where our experts is gonna come in. So um, we've got Karen and Brian, and I just want to take um, a really quick thing. Well, it's not quick. I do want to um, just read a little bit of their bio because these are two very, very impressive teachers. So Karen is an um, ICT teacher integrated at St. George Christian School. Um, her roles um, involves working with the students and the staff in the K-12 environment. Karen also runs um, an IT leadership group for the year five students the design studio um, and a group of highly motivated RoboCup. That's where we actually met, where I met um, Karen was at RoboCup. She's passionate about integrating technology and transforming learning. So it's very accessible for everybody. Um, the community is the heart of what Karen builds with her students when there's creating, designing, innovation. Um, and I know there's always a lot of fun as well when she, do, when, you know, when she does a project. Um, she leads both her staff and students with digital technology and it's a journey and it involves walking besides people and tinkering and then embedding those skills into the rigorous and sound um, pedagogy. Karen loves exploring new possibilities and to expand horizons. So, you know, Karen, she is just, yeah, she's just awesome. One of the really early adopters. But Brian, Brian is just as impressive. So Brian is a passionate educator driven by the possibilities digital and physical technologies um, have in the classroom. He's an advocate for students and teachers taking ownership and becoming lifelong learners that engage with their worlds as active citizens. Um, he's a Google certified innovator. He's a Google certified trainer. He's a CSORT certified educator. He's the director of ICT in New South Wales, and he holds a master's of educational leadership with his research focusing on the leadership practices that foster the uptake and development of high quality future focused teaching and learning across the school. So you can see, I couldn't learn all this because this is just so, so impressive. Um, so I want to hand over to these amazing teachers. Um, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I, I think Karen missed mentioning on her um, profile, she's the, the president of ICT <laughs> New South Wales as well. That's true. <laughs> so tell us, we, you know, where did you learn about Kai's Glenn? How did that all happen? Um, so maybe we should start the story a little bit back before that. <laughs> Brian, Brian and I have been friends for the last five, six years or so. And we started uh, on a journey um, after a meeting at a conference of, um, well, how can, it's okay to do all this stuff in our school and great things and um, great projects that we do with students, but how could we work together and how do we, serve each other as teachers but also to serve our students and to show 
I'm like Brian's bio says about, you know, engaging in real world things and mm -hmm. um, the, the global position of ICT in the classroom. So we've uh, start, done a number of projects before Kai, Kai's plan where we've collaborated across um, with other teachers in this group as well across uh, a number of schools and a number of projects, but looking at STEM and, and um, we have STEM challenge days, probably the best way to describe them, Brian, is that, would you agree? That's, agree? that's, that's correct. Um, and, and I suppose um, this, Kai's, since we're, we've come across Kai's, Kai's plan, sorry, um, it, it's allowed that virtual connection as well, which, is, which has been really, mm um a beneficial especially with COVID a beneficial opportunity yes so our last our last major project together was to happen um well before the 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 current one on Mars was to happen um back in March and it was Sunday night and um it was everything was ready to go for Monday and 7 30 the world went into lockdown here in New mm -hmm. South Wales. So that was the end of that project. <laughs> <laughs> so it was so close. We quite, quite, quite <laughs> kind of plan working on the virtual side at that point in time. <laughs> so it's, it definitely has been a learning experience since that point. Um, for both of us, where we learnt about um, Kai's plan, again, we were at another conference. Um, it was one of the peak um, conferences for technologies in Australia. And <laughs> and Bruce was there um, and we, we were both on the floor just going through the expo side of things and um, at different times we, we both came across Bruce and then I caught up with Karen later on and she was like, oh, you've got to have a look at this. So I went back down there and had a, had a deeper look and just hearing um, the potential of the product um, we sort of, both of us sort of went, oh, there's something in this, we don't know exactly what yet. And we sat on it you know, probably for two years almost, just um, yeah. mulling. That was 2018. Over. Yes. Yeah. And um, it was earlier this year that um, I know at my school we invested in um, Kai's plan. <coughs> Karen, it, it was about the same time at the start of this year or late last yeah, we, year? No, we were, we were probably 12 months before that. Um, we had a, a small pack and then we invested majorly by the end of 2018. 18 yeah yeah i no. think you guys had a yeah we got like a, a prototype yeah pack. yeah we we had a prototype kit for a little bit and then we um so yeah but we have three classroom kits that we use with year six and year eight now so um and what kind of projects i mean you know you were talking about the mars project and stuff how yeah. do you implement it in in the classroom well between schools, um, we've been using the Mars project. That's been the, our focus area because both um, Karen's school and my school have been, our area of, of learning has been space. We've been both tackling the same outcomes. We've been looking at the same um, areas of learning. However, the way that we've tackled that has been completely different. Um, <coughs> the, there's been access to the, the learning of, that each other has been doing. Um, my school, we, we focused on more of the, the natural sciences around, um, around space and looking at um, astronomy and where things fit within our, our solar system and our universe. And then um, we ended up setting up a project where the students are now um, part, of, part, part of Mars 2020 project and um, are doing the early reconnaissance projects to to Mars to actually set up the um, the life set up the what life will look like on Mars um, hopefully from the year twenty twenty four. Um, I know Karen, um, your school took a little bit of different tact. Um, same same result. We're both on Mars, but um, slightly <laughs> different result. Yeah, we um, we. Um, so part of the outcomes is, is also looking at um, the geological um, formations and, and, and natural events that happens within the geological plates and things like earthquakes and volcanoes. And um, my AirPods have just died, so <laughs> I've had to change the speaker system. Um, so we, we looked at the um, resources online that NASA put out 
and all the science. So we looked and we did the science behind that. So we looked at um, robotic arms and, and moving things from one to the other and we made cardboard robotic arms because we knew we were going to use um, Kai's clan. So just to do that whole engineering construction things because kids don't play with enough masking tape and cardboard. And um, we made, um, so they had to be functional arms. Then we did um, uh, thermal insulation. So when you get to Mars, you've got to protect things from radiation. That So there's a whole bunch of NASA on the NASA website of um, experiments for you to do on that journey to Mars. And we also impl implemented Minecraft into to ours. So the classroom teacher did the, all the, the NASA experiments and all of that while I did the digital tech side. And we used, um, we did, we started with just using Kai's clan on the floor as a, as a non mat um, activity. Then we moved into uh, Minecraft and we built, uh, we used the Minecraft, Minecraft have a thing about journey to Mars as well. So we used some of their resources. And um, we built colonies and habitats that we thought would be suitable on Mars um, leading up to our, our, our Mars day. And then we, and we built Mars rovers and we exported them as structure blocks and into Kai's clan so that on our Mars, our virtual Mars day, we, we could use those structures. And, um, and what I learned is that you can still walk inside them in Kai's clan in the, in the Mars thing. So that was pretty cool. Like once they come out of Minecraft, they didn't realize that before. Yeah, so think, that was pretty uh, cool. Get a first um, person view. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, that was a new experience for me. I wasn't expecting that, so the kids were very impressed. By the way, <laughs> that you can still do that. So yeah. So yeah. So ours was a, a different journey, but we, like we said, we all ended up on Mars. <laughs> So um, tell me, I know we didn't, um, eventually because of the COVID thing and everything, you actually didn't manage to join classrooms, but I think we've spoken before and we've actually joined New Zealand classroom with the uh, um, Australian, yes. Karen, with yours. But um, I think with chess, um, you know, we're obviously going to announce the big global chess challenge for next year. Um, but tell me, you know, that collaboration, what was your experience there? Uh, so we have a chess club at school and then uh, Bruce said, uh, I was talking to Bruce one day and he said, uh, oh, we can do chess with Kai and with the creator. And I went, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the other teachers who's doing this journey with me within our school, uh, we are 3D printing some chess pieces and playing virtual chess via Kai's clan, which is not using the robots, but using the QR code. So, um, yeah, so that's a, a new an exciting adventure at our school. Um, we're still learning about that one, still putting that one into process, but um, yeah. Um, um, and the, um, we did collaborate <laughs> on our Mars Day yeah. with you guys and we, because we couldn't catch up with Brian, we in, invited Rennell and uh, Bruce to enjoy our Mars Day. And so the kids actually got to see the virtual uh, one mat in one space and another mat in another space in another part of the world and realized, oh yeah, the robots still can talk to each other because they didn't believe me for a while. <laughs> and I, I think, um, you know, for people that don't know, you know, what's going on here is, I mean, basically we've got a mat, you might have a mat in Sydney and a mat in, you know, New Zealand or a mat in Jordan mm -hmm. or mats all over the world. And the robots that are on each of these mats, we can merge into one, um, you know, global classroom, if we like, and that uh, that global classroom has all the robots from everywhere, and the physical mats um, are then merged into one, and uh, that's you know really the essence of the collaboration then, because we can see each other on our mats, but in a virtual sense. So in a physical yeah, sense, and you, you, can't, you can't collide into one another, which is a great <laughs> thing. <laughs> But you can trigger things to happen in each other's worlds, like uh, I think Bruce made a chicken appear and it rained on top of the chicken. So. Yeah, yeah. So you can do fun things like that. So yeah. with the idea behind, and we'll refine this for next year, um, behind the end of our Mars Day challenge was that um, each school was going to have a base on either side of, of Mars itself. 
and school A had something that school B needed and school B had something that school A needed and the idea was to to traverse Mars to exchange those things using the grippers and getting the robots to pick stuff up and take it across. Um, I ended up doing it because of the circumstances, one class versus another class because on our Mars day I had 56 kids doing this all at once and um, we put chopper chops inside um, plastic picnic cups and the kids exchanged those items uh, on the day as the, you know, the the needed resources. And um, every Martian, need, every Martian needs chopper chops. <laughs> yeah. Skittles are the other things to use as well, those mini packets of Skittles. Um, but the kids the kids found that challenging, but really, really enjoyed the challenge. They said, oh, I wish we had had more time to be more successful at that and that's all part of the teachers planning and you know how much time to give an activity and you know the first year you run something huge like that you go oh we could have done this and done it a different way and so so that's were you our putting learning. The, sorry were you putting the chopper chops on a xy coordinate and then they had to go to that coordinate or yep. Yep. Right. so they had to start in one place the cup was sitting on the mat in another place with the chopper chop in it and they had traverse to the other side. So, so if you look at the Mars mat and you see the Arctic, the polar cap in the one corner, they had to go around that centre mountain and up to the polar cap and come back again. Um, so Karen, I mean, both of you are ICT teachers, so you understand and you've got some coding experience, but there may be teachers on here that's never done coding. Um, how difficult is it to get into it? How did you start with your students? Well, well to be honest, um, in my perspective, I'm actually a class. My, my main focus is a classroom teacher. Um, I, in my situation, I, I actually teach 112 students um, with six other teachers all on the floor. So um, basically, for me to get anything off the ground, I've got a lot of convincing I need to do first up. So um, it's very much initially sitting with teachers and, and showing them the benefits. Uh, I found that one, the collaboration is, is a huge thing. The virtual VR and the AR is another area um, that's phenomenal. Being able to embed the elements from Minecraft or from Tinkercad um, is another additional element to this, which is, is great. The sensors, that go above and beyond what's currently on the body of, of Kai's plan allows additional areas of data gathering. Where it comes down to um, a big difference did come down to the data side of things. Um, in our syllabus, we need to be able to teach a lot about data and understanding data and being able to generate that data with one single unit and then being able to then have the students um, analyze that data was a significant thing. And um, I know in my situation, I've had every teacher that I've been working with um, in this, this journey so far sit there and go, we actually need to give this a lot more time. Um, and this term, like we, we did that for last term, our unit on space, and um, they basically all six teachers said, by the end of the term, we, we need to give you all of next term to actually go deeper with the students. So this term, <coughs> um, we've just been going deeper and deeper into the Mars projects so that students get a much greater understanding because again, it's the first year, um, much greater understanding of what the robots can do, the potential of those robots. Um, and as a result, the students every week are going, can we have more than 40 minutes? Can we? And that's that's what we give. We have the students. same problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's that's awesome to see kids wanting to learn more. You know, she, if I was at school, I'd be like, where's that bell? I want to get out of there, you know, but because, you know, <laughs> because class was boring. It was all about theory. And um, and but now, you know, and that's what I wanted. I wanted something fun, exciting, but with some some real um, heavy learning in there. Yeah, and one of the other things that we have to look at in that same curriculum is the, um, the 
oh, I've forgotten, mind blank at this hour of the morning, the geological, um, oh, Brian, help. Um, the geological events on Earth, and because Mars is so similar and we were able to, um, we fortunately, the Powerhouse Museum here in Sydney did a, an astronaut um, video link up last term that there was just a lot of things that came together last mm -hmm. term with SpaceX and and everything so we we're very excited about that and one of them was this link up to um, an, an Australian astronaut I, I working with so who who was a geologist and um, he was able to for the kids bring that link of what happens on earth to what happens on what they think is happening on Mars as far as geological events and that all has to be within our science curriculum and all create became part of the story of our journey to Mars Day. Yeah. So when we did our Mars Day and the kids were doing that chuppa chuppa thing, we had a, a Mars quake, um, another group. And so I we put in surprise scenarios to them. So one group had to deal with a Mars quake, another group had to deal with a Mars dust storm, and the other group had to deal with a Mars volcano eruption. <clears throat> so all of the real world things that might happen on earth as natural events here and, um, and disasters depending on where they, they occur um, happened to their colony on Mars as well so they had to know how to how to deal with that so we could yeah. got even more outcomes on our own soil there. So um, on Kai's plan we've got obviously some lesson plans and things like that as well so I mean you guys are incredible you've created your own projects and come up with new ideas which is great because that just you know you can start thinking outside the box um, and do all those things but did you look do you think it was helpful to have these lesson plans sort of sitting there ready for teachers <coughs> to start using those resources? Absolutely. Um, I know. Yeah, I um, use the intro one. <coughs> yeah, I, exactly the same. And being able to have the, um, the, the, the template, so to speak, um, when you first load up a project, you can see mm. something that will look similar to the end code. That gives a success. Um, so the students can look at that and go, okay, if, I, if my code looks something similar to this, that's a, a criteria for success. They then remove that and actually go through the lesson as as it's written and work through it. And what you find is their code builds very, very similar, but it's them building it, them not just utilizing it. And that's another thing, big thing that's um, we talk about a lot. It's not about the the use or the consumption of, of ICT. It's actually creating using ICT. Yeah. And um, that's something that students find hard to, to initially um, shift from, from where they're so used to be sitting in front of a screen to actually be creating, it's a, it's a massive thing. And when they can see what, what they've created, then start operation on a um, on mat, like within a week sort of thing, basically, because what it takes is often it'll take half an hour for them to code um, and work through the steps and they may not get to running that code that week straight away, but within a week they see their code that they've created the week beforehand running. They sort of, their eyes are open and they, they can see how yeah. what one robot's doing interacts with another robot. There's so much power in that. Yeah. Did you guys, um, did you guys get to, and, and the, oh, sorry. I was just gonna say the other thing about um, coding in Kai's clan is that it's not overcomplicated. Mm. You can get success fairly, like, really quickly, <laughs> even if it's just drawing a, a, a square on the floor with your robot. Like, it, it, it's the block code is not overcomplicated, but you can go very complicated, um, especially once you add the math. So, the buy in is um, really, really uncomplicated once you've got everything set up. Yeah, I'm I mean, gonna have. Sorry, I'm gonna have to go just because of looking at the time, and I, I've got my commute ahead me ahead of me. So um, I'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Thank Brian. We'll Thanks. catch you later. Thanks See you. very much. Drive safely. We'll do. Thank you. Bye. See you tonight. Um, Brian so, has a, an hour's drive to work. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow. Pretty yeah. pretty crazy. What what I love um, doing, and I don't know if you've done it, Karen, is really mixing um, 
you know, the physical world and the virtual world together. Um, and I love to see the results of that, you know, so like, I don't know if you've done that, like use the ultrasonic distance <clears throat> sensors on the front of the robot to then have a virtual, you know, so you could like, you could make an airplane inside Kai's clan fly, depending on how how move, how far you move away from the ultrasonic distance sensors in on the robot. <clears throat> no, I haven't got that far into it yet. But we did use um, when we did that chapa chap one. A couple of groups got as far as using a QR code on by turning the cup upside down and putting it on top of the cup. And so that was the structure that they built inside Minecraft. So we had we did get that far. Um, but yeah, so we're still, we're still doing and experimenting with some of those things. So there's still weeks in the school year that we um, we will continue that journey. But yeah, so no, I haven't done the ultrasonic. Um, so that's, but, that's not a bad idea. I think, to, but I think yeah. this, what this shows is the the breadth, the the you know, like the low floor, the high ceiling, and that was the aim um, with Kai's clan, so that you can go and see you can go and create your robot avatars you can go and see augmented reality and virtual reality but why don't we um you know i think what we're going to do for just a little bit is we're going to actually cross over and show you sort of a short little demo so we've got our mars mat set up here um and we're going to switch a couple of robots on and just show you the simplicity and it is really depending what tool you want to grab from that toolbox so it may be a little bit overwhelming but let's see how much we can do um, in the next um, 10 minutes and if you guys got any questions for Karen please put it in the chat and then we'll come back to it so Bruce all uh, right um, yeah so ask ahead any questions so as you can see here, I've got um, my robots on my mat. And if I switch video, uh, you can see the video as well of the physical robots on the mat. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do that very quick demo. I've got robot three sitting with me here uh, in front of me, and we can see it's got its ultrasonic distance. I'm gonna do what we just chatted about. So if I move my hand close to it, and if I move my hand far away from the robot, then you'll see the um, distance increase. So I'm going to see if I can make a virtual character fly. So inside Kai's clan, we've got a virtual viewer. I'll just run that. So it takes a little while to load. Now, um, so we've got Robot 3's ultrasonic. So this means I'm going to um, I'm going to try and make something fly based on the height. So inside Kai's clan on the left hand side, you've got the coding blocks, and that. So um, we've got the coding blocks, um, and here we've got Robot Two, uh, which is a Mars rover. So this is our Mars environment. So wherever this robot moves around, it's um, for those people who are not familiar with Kai's plan, what it enables is wherever the, the physical robot is, uh, the virtual robot will travel. So let's have a look. Uh, robot two is sitting here. Um, yes, yeah, so robot two is sitting here. And we're gonna, just going to get Robot 2 to drive. Uh, let's drive them over to 50, 41. So 50, 41. So we use real-time coordinates. So here you go. So you'll see now Robot 2 is driving. So both the physical, <coughs> there you go, and the virtual are tied together. So... Um, so now we've got that, let's um, see if we can uh, get them to fly at a different height. So I'm going to use uh, Sandbox Transform uh, Fly at Height. So Robot 2. So if you can see, I'm going to type in 10 centimeters here. Let's just get a better angle of them. Whoop. 
There we go. Oh no, he's because he's just <laughs> updating. Just yeah, just can you put him in the middle of somewhere for now? Thank you. Right. Yeah, with uh, with Zoom we have a bit of a lag. Let's uh, let's do it on Robot One here. So um, we've got Simon uh, Robot One. So we're just going to say fly at ten centimeters. And when that code runs, then you can see now uh, the Mars rover is flying at 10 centimeters. Okay, so now we know that works. What we're going to do is we're going to change uh, that for what shall we change them for? Um, some balloons. A creeper. Oh, yeah, we could do some balloons. Okay, so we're going to change robot one into a pack of balloons. So let's load that. So this is where students can come in and Minecraft or Tinkercad or Google Poly and create their own designs or create their own, as we call them, robot avatars. Some teachers call them actors because it's all about storytelling. Okay, so there's our balloons. And so what we're going to do is we're going to use the ultrasonic distance to make it fly. So we need the fly at height. So get rid of that. We need the fly at height. And we need uh, bits. Uh, we need uh, what is it? Um, hold on. Um, yeah, it was uh, on board. And we have an ultrasonic distance. So the distance that I'm receiving, so robot one is going to use the distance of robot three. The robot three is here. I'm going to put this into a loop and let's just get a better view. Whoa. So you can see now that this, um, I'm holding my hand over the robot. <clears throat> and if we switch, uh, switch cameras, so like here, so you can see I'm holding my hands over his eyes to try and keep him uh, low down. And when I move my hand away, you're going to see, wow, he's so high up. So, wow, look how high he is of, over Mars. Um, so this is the, the, the real-time distance. So I'd have to use some maths uh, to reduce that height, so to drop him down. So we could possibly go um, uh, get a maths block and say, put this in here. Now, you see, this is where it starts getting a little bit involved. Um, and we let's let's just say uh, divide that by what should we divide it by a hundred? And let's try running that again and see if it changes much. Well, there you go. So you can see the balloons now drop down to the ground. And if we face that, maybe a hundred was too much. Yeah, I think a hundred's too much. If it's sitting on the ground. It's divided by ten. Yeah. Okay, so that's division by 10. Uh, so if I hold my hand over the robot, uh, you can see the distance is changing. So the height will change. Um, there we go. So it's flying high. Yeah. There you go, Karen. That's how easy it is. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> yeah. I was just going to say, just imagine all that data collection that you can do in the bottom of your screen as well and then go and analyze. So just out of one line of code, basically. So, yeah. yeah. I think we've got That's some pretty cool. questions. So next year I can get them to uh, fly the, uh, instead of having to reverse Mars, they can fly or send up balloons onto the other side. Yeah. Um, we've got this all. There's an orbit function. So you can like say design a satellite in Minecraft, bring that in and the QR code is the right. center of the axis. And then you can orbit that 3D model around that QR code. So you can have a satellite going around Mars. Yeah, that's pretty cool too, yeah. The, the students um, screen recorded the virtual view. Uh, I had a learning journal where they sort of annotated what they were learning and the things they were enjoying, the things they were finding frustrating and things they wanted more time on and what they had learned. And one of the things was, was about time and about what other things that they could explore. So yeah, so it'd be good.
Yeah. I, um, we, Brian and I certainly don't know everything about Kai's clan yet, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, yeah, don't, don't worry, um, neither do I. So, <laughs> I mean, that's the thing that we've built is we've built a tool and it's like, wow, you know, I'm, I'm still learning, um, you know, the capabilities of it. Yeah, so uh, this, is a, this is the virtual, so we're sharing the iPad now. Um, so all these elements you see, some of them are fixed, some of them are, um, you know, available to to use. So I can go to sandbox and I can I can set things on fire. We talked about uh, setting um, a building on fire. So let me try and put a building on fire. So that's under effects, um, and I think a fire effect. And we put a, I think it was one hundred. Um, so if we look for 100 on the iPad, uh, we should start seeing a fire occur uh, somewhere. Uh, there's 100 there. So when it's idle. Uh, there we go. So, so now we've got a fire in Mars. So the nice thing with Kai's Clan is we've got this whole digital physical um, you know, thing, and this is multiplayer. So anyone from any country could just join in as a student and code these remotely. So this is that uh, augmented uh, reality view of of Mars. And so if I um, code robot two to move around, let's go motion map movement. Get into the code. <clears throat> so here we go. So robot two is now moving around. And uh, the problem with Zoom we've got is a bit of a lag. So the, the robot avatar is having a problem following it just with the lag. But yeah, this is an augmented reality. And if you, if, um, you can see, we've got a compass up there. So you're getting real world data um of of the physical mat um yeah so there's lots lots of learning there and we've got different environments stop sharing there yeah are you right to using the uh the warehouse map and looking at amazon and automated 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 warehouses yeah and um so we've just started that this week um to do that with year eight so yeah, I think that's um, uh, updating the that one. Yeah, uh, is that the one? Yeah, it looks like it's upside better. down. Yeah. Oh yeah, that looks better. Yeah. 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 So the teachers learning as the students are learning in, in this one. So <laughs> there's no somebody miss it. The, the the students in year eight are learning alongside the uh, teachers, so um, it's a journey together. In that, um, yeah. the year eight teachers haven't yeah. experienced Kai's clan before; they've not taught with it, uh, yeah. and I'm in there helping them, and we're all journeying in together. Uh, so the kids are excited about it, and I, the photo I took yesterday of the all the the boys and the girls sitting around this small mat and these sort of teenage bodies around it, getting very excited about what they could see inside the warehouse and what they could do with it. So yeah, be good to see in a couple of weeks what they've they investigated. Yeah. Have you have you seen the uh, the crane come and pick up an object when you put it into uh, this space over here down there? No, I've yeah. seen the crane. So how does that work? So you see that concrete pad there, uh, roughly where my finger is. See, mm -hmm. there's a grey concrete pad. Yep. Uh, by the crane. So if you put an object yep. into that zone, then uh, what you'll see is the train will come out of its station, uh, which is uh, where are we over here. So this is the train station here, and a train is hiding inside here, and the train will come out onto the train track, and then mm -hmm. uh, pick up the crate from the crane. Oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. This I'll have is, to go do some more playing with that. that the got all these one. little uh, Easter eggs hidden away. <laughs> mm. 
so this is a rescue run. Um, uh, what am I? Uh, So I like Rescue Run. It's it's a lot of fun. Um, so you got the characters moving around and just press the little mountain range icon. Yeah. So you can then um, you know turn on and off um, the the augmented reality of this. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, you were talking about chess earlier, so this is our chess piece, um, and we use these QR codes on the top here. Um, Karen, have you got your um, learning journal? Um, I know last night you were going to see if you could find some images that you can share, or oh, I, I collected. I collected some of the things, uh, images that they built in Minecraft, and. Um, some of the early videos we did where um, it's actually one of your projects in the Kai's uh, community, Kai's community projects, where you have to make the robot run around that center mount mountain on the Mars map. Um, I can show you some of those if you like. That would be awesome. Yes, please. Let me just uh, share my screen. So is that centre now? Yeah. So this is um this is one of the Mars rovers um some of the girls built. The problem with Minecraft was that you can't have round wheels, and they were excited when they put that structure into the Kai's clan mat that the robot still moved even though it's got square wheels here, um, because the robot obviously has round wheels and um that rover still worked. So that was pretty exciting. Um, one of the challenges within the Mars project within Minecraft was that they had to build, build a habitat, they had to plan it out, and the different colours of the post-it notes meant different um, parts of the habitat they had to have. So they had to have um, a mental and well-being thing for the people that were living on Mars. They had to have the um, functional things for sustainability to keep the Mars habitat alive. So we've got living quarters and we needed hydroponic bays. And they had to consider the airlocks um, because you can't breathe obviously the Mars um, atmosphere and they couldn't have glass as the, uh, for the hydroponics bay because uh, the meteorite, meteorites that hit Mars and things like that. So they had to actually think about what they wanted and when we left Earth, they could only take in their um, Minecraft um, inventory chests uh, certain items because it all had to fit on the spaceship as we flew. So these are some of the planning activities that the kids did, some of the structures that they built and then put into Kai's clan. Um, just a few more bits and pieces. Lovely living quarters here. So that was very positive. Melanta, well health and well-being. Oh, they also had to include the research and the engineering side of the Mars colony and you know, what they were set up there from Earth to do. Uh, this is uh, this is just the, um, I got them to film what it was like without any AR or VR first so they could work. Because the students, some of them found, especially um, those that struggled with maths a bit, the coordinate side of things tricky and I they had to negotiate this mountain here without running through the rock so that when they put it into AR they're not driving through the middle of a mountainside. Yeah. <clears throat> so anyway this robot still goes around. I probably should have sped up that movie shouldn't I? <laughs> but that's okay. So Hopefully that makes sense to people. And then this one, hopefully, is the VR of it. I mean, AR of it. So that is that the same robot? Kids like the sound effects. <laughs> uh, no, their robot is here. Um, I'm not sure why this one did this on, on their film. Um, I haven't been able to get back and work out what happened there. But it could have been one of the other kids' robots on there on the mat as well.
the sound effects when you do the the um, AR is makes it. Um, I apologise for my kids' filming skills and how seasick you're going to feel. But, <laughs> <laughs> this is their first attempt at actually filming this side of it. Yeah, it's it's not easy to film. Um, we have put a cinematic, no. so that you see the little um, uh, person's eye icon on the left hand side. Um, that allows you mm -hmm. to run a cinematic view. So if you are recording, it it gives you like oh, a yeah. 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 Yeah, that's so they've miss miss moving this. So it started over here, and because their filming skills aren't great, this this robot here has has gone around half that mountain now. Anyway, so yeah. we don't make people see it feels seasick. That's just a few more shots. So yeah, so um, we've um. Yeah. And what was the outcomes? Um, obviously, you in New South Wales, Australia. So, what was your curriculum outcomes, or um, you know, where did that sort of fit within? That's actually, on, that's actually on this document here. Um, oh, cool. So, this is for Year Six. Um, so, the skills, knowledge, and enduring understandings uh, are all here. Um, So the, the curriculum statement is um, understands the properties and materials determine their use for a range of purposes. So that we, we use the Minecraft materials, we use the, um, back in the classroom when we're doing the NASA experiments, we were, we're looking at, um, uh, oh, what's it called, thermal, um, my brain doesn't work till 11 o'clock in the morning. Um, <laughs> thermal, thermal, like thermal protection where you've got to keep the heat out, the, the coldness in and the heat out. So I just can't remember the scientific name for that at the moment. Um, so, so this was the, the week by week planner. So that. that's really interesting so to see. So was that sort of over 10 weeks or how long? I mean, a yes. project like this, ten how weeks. long 10 weeks? Okay, that's good. So, yeah. So we in in New South or in Australia, our um, outcomes for science and technology are in stages. So stage three, which is what this project was for, <clears throat> includes all of you five and all of you six. So you have to cover the stage three outcomes within those two years. So what our school has done, and not every school does this we divided the because <clears throat> there's five areas of life learning in the science curriculum there's living worlds digital technologies physical world um earth and space and so obviously this fits in earth and space and did i say material world yet i mean but and so we found that when we have a a year a academic year that's divided into four ten approximately four ten week terms um we found trying to fit five in didn't work so what we and digital technologies has only been a new thing in the last two years here in new south wales it's been a part of the curriculum for the rest of australia for longer than that for uh, other states so what we decided at our school was that we would give two strands um the two tradition of the four traditional strands we'd give two to year five and two to year six and everybody had to do digital technologies and integrate it so year six got earth and space, which is, so we got to spend a term and a half on this. So we're still, that's why we're still working this term um, with the digital technologies and working and our Mars day could come after this 10th week. So they landed on Mars last term and they their surface operations going and they did the experiments for that. But our Mars day, happened in October this term. So this was back in mid-July, we came back for term three. So this finished in around about September, but a couple of these activities, because we did it on a semester basis, got pushed into October as we have a two week term break. And we've been continuing with the digital tech side this term, mm. if that makes sense. Yeah. 
I can. I mean, this is this is really really interesting because you know we have a lot of questions. Um, I know Manal and Jordan busy working with primary and secondary school um, students and teachers at the moment, and sort of looking how, you know, how long will it take? We get this question all the time. You know, how long should we spend with Kai's clan? And I think the answer is, like you say, you can do a couple of terms, but then you can do it every year, and you can just keep introducing the new aspects, the senses, the data. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we have this conversation at the moment that students can see the JavaScript as well, and we will be introducing yes. Python next, next year. So I think that was um, something you, you asked about as well. So Brian, Brian and I are very strong about making sustainable units that you can teach year after year. And so um, that's why we're happy to make the fails, the first attempt in learnings the first year round or even the second year round. And the kids are very, know that that's what will happen. And so we will go on a, you know, aim for here. And if we get to here, that's okay. We just make it better the next year. And um, what was I going to say? Um, the, the text oh, guys. Oh, I know what I was going to say. So in a, in, a, in our timetable for learning for the week, science gets, um, I think in year six, they get three 45-minute periods to do that. And then we have a once a week 45 um, digital technologies lesson. So that's the amount of time that this unit was given over that term and, and into this term. Fantastic. So those science experiments that are in that weekly teaching se sequence, they, they, they take a, a fair bit of time too because they're hands-on practicals. That robotic arm took a double period, so 45, so an hour and a half to do. So, mm. yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, that was really, really um, very insightful. And thank you very much. So if there's any other questions, please put it in the chat or just put your hand up and we can unmute you. Otherwise, I just want to, I did promise before it's nine o'clock, just to quickly um, see if I can find it, that there is that little thing at the end here. Let's see if I can get to it. So obviously we've got the starter pack, which is four robots. We've got a classroom kit, which is 12 robots or two mats. You can get the different mats. So you can always contact us about all of that. Just want to get to the last slide. And you can also create your own environments on the create mat as well. Mm. And then obviously anybody that orders um, one of the Kaisland products, we will throw in a free create mat up to the end of December. So um, any questions, you know, just um, email me, Ranelle at um, kaisland.ai. Um, and we've got another session later today or tonight in New Zealand time. Um, and then we will combine this, these two recordings and flick it out to everybody. So there's no, I don't see any other questions. I wanted to say thank you very much for your time. Really appreciate it. Karen, anything more from you? Uh, can I say one? Yeah, just I was just going to say looking at the chat questions. Um, I guess the starting point, if you were, weren't sure, would be to start with the projects that are in the Kai's Clan community because you know somebody's tested those uh, and then develop your own worlds and, you, and your own process. You, um, so for me, this has been a two-year journey for me to get to be able to do Mars Day. So it wasn't it wasn't something that suddenly, oh, I'm going to do this. I, I had to learn one step at a time, just like anybody else starting out. Um, it's great to get to where I am now, and there's still a lot further that, that we and Brian and I hope to get to. But start small, make, make, your, make things achievable without having to integrate it into this massive big day. But aim for it, and if you're really adventurous, go for it. But remember, remember that you can start small. You don't have to conquer the world in a day. Yeah. Absolutely. No, that's that's really good. And obviously, we offer the PD. So any teachers, you know, when you get kids, we are here. Um, you know, you can just flick us a time. We sit down and do some PD <laughs> with you. So. And to be fair, I made lots of phone calls to New Zealand when I started out. <laughs> Bruce Love got it. a lot, and and can I say that the guys at Bruce and Renell are fantastic in the support that they'll give you at the back end, especially 
when you buy these kits. So don't hesitate to ring. Yeah, we're, we're excellent. We're, at the, always, the support staff, um, yeah. we're always aiming to improve the system. So, you know, any feedback you, you give us, you probably find those features coming into the system. Uh, I think last week we had a teacher say, in the student page, um, can the student that's driving his robots have a different color for his, um, you know, for his robot so he could see he's a green robot and everyone else is blue kind of thing. So, and that and that's been put in. You know, that's I think that's now released uh, in the student page. So, yeah, we're constantly trying to improve the system and making it easier, but while making it easier, still have a huge, a very high ceiling to take and uh, fly high with Kai. All right, well, thank you, everybody. And <laughs> what do we usually say? I don't know, what do you say? Hi, Kai. <laughs> Hi, Kai. <laughs> a, big, Hi, Kai. <laughs> a big Kai five. So many years <laughs> of training and... Thank you very much, everybody. And um, yeah, we'll talk. We'll talk soon again. Thanks, Karen. Thanks, Karen. Thanks, Manel. Thanks, Capel. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. See you later. For See ya. Bye.